Hi, I'm Mick Godekin with Orthman Manufacturing. Back again with a, another segment of this video series about what happened at the research farm in 2021. Today, I want to really talk to you about the 21, 2021 soybean side dress trial and our soybean population trial. You know, I, I say soybean side dress and, and a lot of you guys are throwing up question marks going, what? Side dress soybeans? We don't side dress soybeans, we side dress corn. You think about this and, and we were fortunate. Uh, we came across an article, basically came out of China where they're doing some research on nutrient uses and, and nutrient uptake. And, and we can look at those nutrient uptake curves, but uh, we don't do a lot of, in the United States, our, our land grant universities are not doing a lot of, of basic agronomy research anymore. And so all we have is some older uptake curves and, and the Chinese are doing some work and they've noticed that there seems to be a little bit more phosphate uptake in late late in the lifetime of a soybean plant than what we thought there was even from our our research so we saw this and and we, it was about time to hill the soybeans and and we said you know what we've got a little bit of space at the research farm let's try this and, and really see what happens and uh to me wow i it it really excited me excited me you know we added some zinc and we and we applied that all at late r2 uh because when you think about zinc and phosphate they got to work together to go into the plant and and some of the physiological things that they're kicking off uh need to be both phosphorus and zinc there the the picture here on this slide is is where the far left is is a check and then these other two are are where we side dress with the zinc and the phosphate in the in just the phosphate alone and man that you look at that and it's exciting to look at and and when you see that kind of response in soybeans it gets you excited and you know these pictures were taken in August, mid-august and, and we were excited to, as to what we would see at harvest time in september and we, i will tell you that we're going to do this trial again at the research farm and, and just verify some things I will tell you, based off of results, we're going to change a few things. Our check was 95 bushel, uh, wonderful check. When we added the 1034.0, four gallons of 1034.0 per acre, we got 100.1 100 100 bushel. So we really increased yield by bushel. When we added the 1034.0 and the zinc, we only increased yield by three bushel. Uh, did we really do something there uh, that was wrong? No. Uh, I think our zinc timing was a little bit late. Zinc moves notoriously slow in the, in the soybean plant. And to get it into the plant and, and utilized uh, at this point in time through root interception, uh, we would need a little bit more time. So I think we need to move this trial a little bit earlier, maybe go into the R1 stage, staging, uh, see if we can get a better response out of it on our soybeans. So we that's what our plans will be for next year is, is or 2022, is we'll actually add that zinc, but we'll do that in an earlier, earlier time frame. I think that we'll get more, more out of that zinc if we do it that way. We look at when we added... 1034 plus zinc plus the boost we got 4.4 bushel certainly i wouldn't turn away any of these the 1034 by itself uh, had gave us the best net return at 48 dollars an acre uh, the other two were still po very positive re returns at 16 dollars an acre and 30 30 dollars almost 31 dollars an acre uh, these are great trials to start out with uh, it was a great, great jumping off point for us. We really want to take and refine this and, and get it to where we know that it's repeatable and we're going to see these kind of results year in and year out. But I know utilizing that, our cultivator, and placing that nutrient close to that plant in that root zone, we saw the roots actually proliferate where we applied that. We could dig plants up and, and save it. 
man, that thing, it had a root there in our check. But when we added that phosphate there, we could see that, that there's a lot, there's a few more root hairs there. And they were going after that phosphate. And we saw a yield response. We want to be consistent yield response. Uh, others have asked, can we do this with a wide drop? I hope that I have the opportunity at the research farm to, to get a wide drop in there and have at least eight or 16 rows where we actually apply that with the wide drop or more uh, if, if we can get that piece of equipment to the farm at the right timing. I think that uh, is there enough water soluble phosphate in four gallons of 1034O to get down into the root zone and, and make a difference? It's debatable. But if we get some rain and, and I know phosphate doesn't move that much in the soil, but that water soluble portion will, we can get that water soluble portion pushed down to the roots. Uh, maybe why drop work? That's why we want to try. Next, I want to talk about the, the uh, soybean population trial. Now, this is a trial that is not done on our research farm, but it's it's done in conjunctions with with High Plains FFA. Uh, we have a soybean population trial there. Uh, the kids help plant that. They help. They do the irrigation. Uh, they help collect data off of that and. They, it's a learning opportunity for the FFA children. It's a great opportunity for us to share that, share information and help them learn some agronomic uh, information along the way. We certainly uh, are very appreciative of having the help of the High Plains FFA. At their plot, we planted five populations. We planted 60,000, 80,000, 100,000, 120,000, and 150,000 plants per, seeds per acre at planting, that was our drop rates. And we planted those, the 150,000 was recommended. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I don't recommend that every grower goes out there and plant 60,000 or 80,000. But if you're managing your soybeans uh, and you have the ability of manage them and wanna take a little risk, can you make more money by planting less soybeans per acre? So let's see what the data says. Uh, you know, I think about, first of all, we went out there at the first, uh, the second of July, and we started counting. We did, did some physiological measurements. Uh, we were actually counting the number of branches and the number of nodes and measuring plant height. Those crowded plants at 150,000 and 120,000 were taller than at the 60 and 80 and 100,000 makes sense because they're competing for sunlight and they got to reach up further and in, in, in order to grab that sunlight. When we look at the number of branches and the number of nodes at that point in time on January, on July 2nd, our 150,000 population, we had 4.2 branches and 14.7 nodes. I'm just going to skip down to the 80,000. We had 5.7 branches. So we had almost a branch and a half more per plant on average. In addition to that, we had 24.5 nodes. We had 10 more nodes per plant. That told me that we could have more soybeans per plant out there. And you think about this, we're removing interplant competition. We know that it works in corn, and we have learned that over and over again. And I think that if we have planters that can get better at placement of seed, and we can singulate some seed on some soybeans and get some equal spacing. We take away that in interplant competition, and all of a sudden we can increase our soybean yields. So when we look at that data, and on 150,000 population, our yield was 82.9 bushel. Okay, our best yield in that entire plot was 120 at 84.5 bushel of the acre, uh, 1.6 bushel better than that check. But how do the others compare? 60,000, we were at 83.6 bushel, eight tenths of a bushel better than that check of 150. 
80,000. We were just a half a bushel short at 82.3. At 100,000, we were 83.7. So we're eight tenths of a bushel better. So let's look at the, the financials and, and we'll just utilize our seed cost and our revenue change to calculate some net revenues per acre. And if we look at net revenue per acre on that check, it's $961.80. Uh, if we go to the $60,000, we, we increase that net revenue by $42. I will tell you, $60,000 is very risky. Had we had a hailstorm or a wind event come through, and uh, I don't think we would have had that close of a yield. But it worked. And we're going to try this again at our research farm in a little less protected area. I will say that this plot is it's alongside town. It's got town on one side, a, a, a railroad track on the other, and a and then a farmstead on the other. On So three sides are protected very well. Uh, so we need to take this out to a different farm and look at this trial next year. Our 80,000 soybeans per acre was $19, $19 more net revenue per acre than our check at 150. And it's all put from seed savings, seed cost savings. Our 100,000 was $28 more an acre. And then our 120 was $30, $30 more an acre. So the whole thought process here is, can we back those populations down and get similar or the same yields and increase our net revenue per acre? So can we actually grow more with less or grow the same amount with less inputs? And I will tell you, these, these soybeans are highly managed at this plot. We're out there, they're a little bit protected. Next year, when we have it at the research farm, we're a little less protected. We'll see what those results will be. But I think that we're gonna see similar results. I don't know that they'll be exactly the same, but we'll see similar results. I think that we can get by with less soybeans than what we're planting, especially when we're planting with a good quality planter, getting some spacing correct uh, and getting the, and then managing beyond that and making sure that we're that we're happy and healthy in the entire growing scene. With that, I want to want to say thank you for for spending some time and and watching this video series. Once again, I, I thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, if you have questions, please reach out to to a Northman sales rep or myself, and we can help answer those questions. Be safe out there and have a great day.